And I'm going to talk about our, our wetland and grassland program. And it can, it basically consists of four things. Fencing, grass seeding, water development, and, and wetland restoration. Um, and I'm going to go through a bunch of photographs of, of projects that we've funded uh, and kind of give you an overview of, of what this consists of. This is, uh, this is a project that we did in, in Davison County. Uh, it's a perimeter fence around a pasture. Uh, and, and the reason we decided to, to fund this is that this pasture is part of a rotation. There is a, um, they're leaving grass in this pasture when they're, when they're leaving. You know, it's not being grazed to the ground. So it's, it's part of a rotation. Uh, these guys were fed. I like this photo because it's, it's uh, well, it's hard to get excited about fence, but <laughs> uh, these guys were, were big pheasant hunters and, and that was part of the reason they were leaving a lot of that grass out there was to leave some cover. But if you notice here that the bottom wire on here is a smooth wire so that their, their dogs weren't getting caught up in the red brand wire. Uh, I had water development listed up there before um, and that's primarily tire tanks and rural water hookups and pipelines for, for livestock water and pasture. Um, we've, we fund stuff like this because it um, obviously it's, it's better water for the cattle. Um, we can break up the, the grazing rotation by having water in different parts of the pasture. That, this particular tank, uh, there wasn't any rural water nearby but there was, a, uh, there was a shallow well, um, but it wasn't flowing anymore, so we actually uh, were pumping it with this, with this solar panel. This is another tank down, uh, I think this is Davison County too, but um, we had a corral set up around it so that they could have a four pasture grazing system, but all use the same tank. So that worked out pretty well for that landowner. Uh, this is a grass seeding, or more, it's, it's more a grass renovation. Uh, this whole field here was all brome and Kentucky bluegrass. And you can still see the, what's left here of it. So we went in, we, we did Roundup soybeans for a year on this. I think they did four Roundup applications. So you can see it's, it's dead. And then this is the next spring, and there's some stuff some annual weeds coming up in here, a little bit of, you can see there's a little bit of brome grass left out there, but we hit it with Roundup again, and then we came in and, and we seeded it. And these are, uh, these are the, drill, the drill rows here from when they planted it, and you can see the, you can see the native grasses and the, the wildflowers coming up here. And, and there's a few weeds in there, but uh, we mowed it about a month later, so it pretty much took care of the weeds. So this is what it looked like the end of that first year. Even after it was mowed, it's still a lot of the wildflowers headed out. And uh, you can see that early successional habitat going on here that Chris was talking about. You've got a lot of your uh, pigeon grass or green foxtail. Um, but there's, there's still a lot of the native grass and, and wildflowers in there. This was the second year. So you can see it's, it's really starting to develop. And uh, well, you can see what great habitat that would be for a pheasant or a deer or uh, pretty much any critter that's out there. Then this is the third year. Um, and this is pretty much what it looks like now. It, it, it looks really great and uh, a lot of wildlife use. And you notice a lot of these pictures, you know, we keep talking about this, you know, the flowers and the pollinators and, and uh, we're really trying to hit that hard because it's, it's so important to have that diversity on your property. This is actually in Spink County. Uh, probably see a lot of this around here, the saline areas. Uh, this particular landowner, uh, he, did, he didn't want to he didn't want to plant this anymore because nothing was growing and just kind of wanted to forget about it. So what we decided to do was we'd go in and seed these areas down and then he would cut it for hay or he would turn his cows out in that field after he'd taken his crops off and let him graze it off. 
but you can see you can see where the drill went through here and we actually got a bunch of this tall wheat grass to germinate and then you can see the rows again uh, this is a photo of that's what it looked like in the fall so it's it's not impossible to take these saline areas and, and do something productive with them I guess is what I'm I'm trying to show here uh, this is well this dense nesting cover or a hayland planting that we do uh, as long as as long as you don't cut the hay before July 15th um, we can assist with with funding on on hayland plantings like this so you have your your wheat grass and your alfalfa this is a, a high diversity uh, pasture planting uh, if we if we just if we decide to fund uh, the grass planting on your property uh, we will pay for the seed so we like to see a higher diversity stand of grass than say one or two species of grass with with no wildflowers so because we're funding it we we typically do the more diverse plantings like this and this is another one uh, this was over by Brookings This was down in, in Yankton County. In uh, there's a, a couple there that are uh, they're retired now, but uh, um, they were friends of mine and had they had an area uh, on their property that they they wanted it for you know something to look at, something a little more aesthetic to um, basically to look out their back window and and, and see something that was really unique. So. Um, this is the planting they did down there, and you can see, uh, you know, it's it's pretty nice to look at. It uh, turned out really well. Um, it's that that's high quality pollinator habitat right there. This is a uh, this was for a rancher in Clark County. He wanted big blue stem only. And, and if you know a lot about big blue stem, cows love big blue stem. So that that was all he wanted, and you know that was that was fine with us. And and uh, so we put the seed in the ground the first year, and he he called me up the second year, and he said he said Matt, can I turn my cows out there? And typically we don't turn cows out until probably the third year, just until the grass is mature enough. And and <laughs> I said I said well. I don't know you know it's only the second year and he said well you know I, I already turned my cows out there and I'm like okay well uh, I guess I'll, I guess I'll come up and take a look so when I got up there this this is what the the field looked like so you can see the grass is doing really well but uh, these these were his cows out there and um, so you can see that she's pretty happy and then here's another another photo and uh, they actually had to go through here a couple weeks later with four wheelers because they couldn't see them, <laughs> so they had to they had to scare them up and kind of herd them to one side to get them out of there. Uh, so you don't see that every day where you know somebody has so much grass they can't see their cows. So it was kind of neat. Uh, the wetland restorations we do. Uh, this is down by Salem. Uh, you can see the the large wetland that was created here by by plugging this ditch you know the ditch went through here uh, so we came in we put in the tube and the dirt obviously and on the other side we have a, con a control structure right here so that we can control the level of the water in that wetland and most of the time that we do that is when uh, we have issue with another property or another landowner next to us we can make sure that we're not putting water where we don't need to be and the way we control that is with uh, these boards that go in the front of this structure the more of those you take out it lowers the water level so it's it's very manageable we do a lot of uh, what we call wetland creations and this landowner had had called us up and said you know I I used to have this this wetland that we that we made out there several years ago by putting this embankment in here and it, it had blown out and you can see right here where it blew it blew through the dirt right there 
So we went out and we surveyed it, and uh, this is this is the berm right here that we came in and built, and we took the we took the fill for this berm out out of the side of the um, kind of out of the side of the wetland here. And the reason we did that was is it was all native prairie around it, so we didn't we didn't want to be messing with that. Yeah, and here's another another picture of uh, the wetland creation. So then this is that that picture before, and then this is the photo afterwards. So you can see how we completely restored that that wetland that had had been blown out here before. So that's that's quite the you know it's it's quite a bit of water. It's very good. Uh, it's, very good habitat. Yeah, and here's another picture when uh, it filled up with water. This is uh, another wetland. This is, a, this is a wetland restoration. So what we actually did here was, this was, this wetland right here was drained on purpose through this ditch. A very long time ago and the new the new landowner that bought this property he said you know I, I noticed this this big ditch out here will you guys you know can, is there a way we can plug that to try to get some more habitat so we went out and we we surveyed it and uh, the ditch had run through here so we came in we put in our our ditch plug but we also put a structure in here because we had an issue with the road yeah there's another picture of the structure and you can see the boards in this one are in the middle. And you can see those, it hasn't filled up with water yet. So ideally, we'd want that water to flow over the top of this and, and out the back. And you'll see that here in a minute. So here again, here's that wetland that's drained. Here's the ditch. So by putting that structure in that plug in there, you can see what it looks like now. This is where that structure is. And this is all the water that we've we've put out there. Yeah. So see how that water went up to that board and, and flows over the top right there. A few more pictures of this wetland. So it's kind of neat that you know you can take something that. Had, had been completely wiped off the landscape from that drainage ditch and then kind of bring it back to life. Uh, there's four of us in the state. Uh, Brian Pauley, myself, Tim Olson, and Cody Gruing. And you can see um, kind of the areas that we work in. For, for Brian and I, because we're both in Huron, we kind of just share Eastern South Dakota. So if, if you guys ever need to get a hold of us, uh, you can contact either of us at the Huron office there if you have any questions. Um, that's about all I got, unless you guys have any questions.